In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. And in their names, I am happy to greet all of you who have come out on a Sunday afternoon to hear the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and his spiritual father, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We are happy and honored to see all of you, and we greet you all in the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. You look so good, so beautiful. What better thing could black people be doing on a Sunday afternoon than to spend time discussing plans for our liberation? I think you need to give yourselves a round of applause for coming out this afternoon. All of us, black men and black women, who live in America, we all know that there's something wrong about black people who live in America. Not that we are wrong, but there's something just not right about how we live in America. When we look out into our communities, do we see progress or do we see death? When we look out into our communities and we see the housing that is dilapidated, when we see our brothers and sisters engaged in crime and engaged in activities that are not productive, when we look at our paycheck, and our paycheck, if we got a paycheck, runs out before the month runs out, we know that there's something wrong with black people. Huh? There's something wrong about our condition. And the purpose of this meeting this afternoon is to inform you, to enlighten you, to give you some information, to put forth some proper propaganda, to let you know that there is a reason why black people in America is catching hell while we are catching hell, and what we can do to reverse that situation. And all of us, as Brother Charles was saying, need to put on our listening cap. We need to tune in and listen to the information that will be given. Number one, I'm not the principal speaker. The principal speaker is Brother and Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad, the special assistant of Minister Louis Farrakhan. And his subject is the God damned white man. All right? Now, I didn't cuss, so don't leave out of here saying the Muslims was up there. They, first of all, they searched us before we got in the door. Then I came in with my lady, and she put my lady on one side and put me on the other side. Then they had all of these brothers standing around the wall looking all mean and on security. And then the brother gets up here and talking about the God damned white man. Well, we're not using the name of God in vain. And we're not using profanity. What we are saying is because black people are in the condition that we are in, there's a reason why we are in the condition that we are in. And that reason is connected to the other people huh, that we have relationships with every day that are not in the same condition that we are in, our condition is directly related to the white man. And as a result, there's a relationship that we have formed with white people, but there's an also a relationship that had already been formed between us and God. And there's a relationship that has been formed between the white man and God. So the man who is coming before you is going to expound and teach you on the God damned white man. Okay? But he's going to talk about that. My purpose, my job, is to lay just a foundation, just a realm of understanding 
that we can use to establish a criteria by which we can begin to measure what he says. Because whenever you listen to anybody talk to you, thoughts penetrate your mind. Thoughts set up residence in your subconscious mind so that everything that you hear, you're not going to miss a beat. Because whether you remember it consciously when you leave, all of it is planted in your subconscious mind. And maybe somewhere, somehow, someday, something that you hear this afternoon is going to come back out of you in some way, shape, or form. So let's establish the criteria that we need to use, the reference point that we need to look at in terms of understanding the message of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that will pre be presented by Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad. Number one, all of us who came here, how many of you are here for your first time? Can I see your hands? Well, our praise is due to Allah. Let's give them a round of applause. Well, our praise is due to Allah. Well, when you walked in the door, I'm sure if you are here for your first time, something, you know, was unusual about our meeting. Why? Because we are a religious house. We are a religious institution. And we have a religious message that is different from what we've all been used to hearing. So as soon as you come in, you see an American flag on the bottom, on the blackboard, is that right? And you also see an Islamic flag on the board. Now many of us who have never been privy to understanding what the Islamic flag, at least when I first came in the door, I knew I had never seen one before. So when I saw it, I immediately thought it was a communist flag. Huh? And all of, you know, when I grew up, everything that I had learned was stay away from the communists. So when I came in and sat down and saw the American flag on this side, and I saw a cross, and slavery, suffering, and death, I said, what in the hell is this? I had, I had grown up under the cross. I had grown up under the American flag. And now, the way that this is situated on this blackboard, with the American flag and a cross, the American flag represents, representing the United States of America, and the cross obviously representing the church, having slavery, suffering, and death underneath, I had to say, wait a minute, I got to really be careful in here, because I don't know what these Negroes, niggas, and color folk going to talk about. Then I say, which one will survive the war of Armageddon? Well, I didn't really know what Armageddon meant, but I knew what war meant, and I knew what survival meant, and when we're talking about surviving a war, and you're talking about this flag on one side and this flag on the other side, I really got to pay attention to what's going on. And then after that, seeing this flag and thinking that it might be the communist flag, I said, hey, wait a minute. Let me take a second look. Well, it's not the communist flag. It's not the communist flag. We don't have to worry about the red threat. The red in the flag represents the sun. And the sun is free to shine on everyone. The wicked as well as the righteous. Huh? The American flag also represents something. This red does not represent the sun as is represented in the Islamic flag. The red here represents the blood of our people. And the blood of our people has been caused primarily by an enemy that is among us. All of us 